Hello class. Hope this video finds everyone well. Hope everybody's doing fine on their unit plans. My name is Zach Van, and I'm today my unit review uh, is going to be over a topic, two topics that we that we discussed in class uh, sessions. Um, one of those being communicable diseases, and then the other one being non-communicable diseases. Now I want to start this off by first just stating what exactly we're going to do today and uh, what is on the agenda. And I'm going to start with the three objectives that I have for this lesson, uh, for this review, if you will. The first thing is that the student will be able to define a communicable diseases. Um, the second one is the student will be able to define non-communicable diseases. And the third objective of the day is the student will be able to distinguish the difference between communicable diseases and non-communicable diseases. Now, the objectives are very straightforward, um, and, and this lesson is not too difficult. I just want to review uh, some, some common mistakes that can happen in, in getting these two topics uh, messed up and, and basically mistaken for themselves. Now, the first topic that I want to discuss is communicable diseases. Now, communicable disease can be any disease that you might come in contact with either directly or indirectly. Now, a little bit about direct contact. Um, specifically, two things that uh, are easiest for me to remember are basically, um, let's say you meet someone who is sick and you go, it's a family member, and you go to give them a hug uh, could be because you haven't seen them in a while, or um, or or your your spouse or might uh, have come down with the flu or something, and you all make direct contact uh, by a casual kiss. However, you have still placed yourself uh, at risk for 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 being able to uh, to get this sickness, whatever it may be. Um, now that is direct contact, indirect contact. In this instance, for communicable diseases, are instances such as not washing your hands. You're not coming in direct contact with another human being that has or may have a, a, an illness that is communicable to you through direct contact. So, therefore, the indirect contact is essentially like going to the bathroom and um, and basically you leave the restroom and you do not partake in washing your hands uh, after you use the restroom. And you may go um, somewhere else throughout your day and you may become contact with door handles, uh, uh, anything of that nature that, that someone else may have been sick and they did not wash their hands and touch that door handle and you went and touched that door handle as well. And you've basically um, have captured that bacteria onto your 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 body, your hands, wherever it may be, uh, in the area that you, that you have made contact with that. Now you're still not making direct contact, but you're still making contact in an indirect way, um, which in in overall aspect you still uh, have the have the risk of, of getting the illness that is uh, that is being. Uh, transmitted. Now, airborne transmission, the third um, basically way that a, a uh, communicable disease can be transmitted uh, is basically through the air. Um, you, you think about the changing seasons that we live in here in East Tennessee. Uh, we have the ability to possibly, uh, you know, extract some type of sickness with our sinuses, uh, with our, our cardio, our respiratory system. Uh, basically, uh, it, it, you can think of it as just sinus issues and the ability the air has, uh, especially in our climate uh, and, and other climates that have uh, valleys to where the, the air gets trapped in. And, and basically, we put ourselves more at, at a risk for, for being able to, to catch some type of airborne transmission. Now. That is direct contact, indirect contact, and airborne transmission. Those are the three ways that you can basically uh, 
that you can come in contact with a communicable disease. Now, as far as spreading the communicable disease, uh, the way I like to look at it is who, what, when, why, and how. Who has this communicable disease? Um, you know, you could be living in your house, it could be your mother, your brother, your father, your sister, anybody that is in your house, you could become and in, 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 in come into direct contact with uh, whoever that may be, and you could basically catch that communicable disease from them. Now, what is it? You need to find out, you know, what is exactly that's going on? Is it a common cold? Uh, is it uh, more serious instances such as uh, STIs, uh, STDs? It can be, uh, it can be uh, <clears throat> bacteria or viruses that we can come in contact with that will, will place us at risk for getting a communicable disease. And, and becoming ill. Now, when, you know, what do you, when do you want to, when, or when can this disease be spread? Anytime, we are vulnerable at all times. That's why it is so important for our health and our well-being to be able to practice very good healthy habits because we can abstract these, any of these, uh, or come in contact with any of these diseases at any time. So therefore we have to be prepared. We have to do our part in, in, in helping prevent this uh, spreading from occurring. Now, uh, on to why, why do you wanna do this? Obviously, I just said, uh, for your overall health. You wanna be healthy, no one likes to be sick, it's expensive to be sick for some people, and on top of that, it just really, really is a bearer a bear on someone's life. Uh, and how, how do we prevent the spreading? Of disease um, or how does spreading occur if you will um, basically again it, it's the reiteration of the direct contact the indirect contact and the airborne transmission and we have to be aware of the, those three steps that we can uh, that place us at risk for for getting a communicable disease now on to prevention prevention is strictly practicing positive healthy habits getting in a a routine, a daily routine of being able to to wash your hands thoroughly, you know, after you use the restroom or before you're preparing your food or before you go out for your day. Uh, really being strict on, on yourself and, and understanding that you are at risk for for any type of uh, bacteria or, or, or any type of communicable disease that you may come in contact with, whether it be directly or indirectly. Uh, as well as the airborne transmission. Now, some examples of what a communicable disease. Um, I have STIs, uh, sexual transmitted infections, uh, which, which are very, very uh, dangerous to one's own health uh, in the long term of life. And uh, also sexual transmitted diseases, STDs, uh, also very, very dangerous to one's health. And, and the fact that it is it is not it is not comfortable it is not uh, it is not enjoyable to live that way and have to deal with this, these these issues that could potentially harm your overall health and development as a human being. Now, uh, another one is HIV and AIDS. We know how very serious that can be. A life-threatening disease, very expensive uh, to take care of, and, and very. Uh, very, very draining on the body and very wearing on the body as fatigue, uh, many types of factors that come into play in, in, in the HIV AIDS aspect. If one gets this communicable disease. Now also I mentioned earlier the common cold, uh, we can come direct in contact, directly in contact with someone who has the common cold uh, or as well, you know, they may sneeze or, or they may wipe their nose or something with their hand and then go and touch a door handle and let's say you didn't wash your hands, you don't have any protection or sanitizer and you grab that same door handle and you don't know, you did not know that person was sick, then therefore you have a chance of getting sick. And it's all about being able to think ahead of the game. And be prepared. It's more about being prepared for what you might have to deal with. Uh, that way you don't have to deal with it 
not all the time, are you going to be able to stop yourself, uh, stop or prevent something from happening? But it's about doing as best as you can to prevent that, to ensure that you're doing everything for your overall health and well-being and development. Now, <clears throat> that's communicable diseases. Um, again, direct contact, indirect contact, airborne transmission, very significant to communicable diseases. Now, on to non-communicable diseases. The focus here is really genetics, uh, our heredity, uh, where we're from, how we're, you know, how are we naturally born. Uh, but this, this aspect is very controllable. Just like the communicable diseases is controllable through positive uh, decision making skills and being able to prepare and, and prevent uh, as you go. This right here is requires more self-control into our daily, uh, daily uh, I guess, habits and, and daily actions that we perform. Um, this can include uh, developed diseases. Uh, an example of that would be our nutritional habits. What are our daily habits that we are doing um, as far as eating? Are we getting the right amount of our, our daily vitamins and minerals and our calcium? Are we doing the right thing as far as controlling the amount of calories that we are intaking versus the account, the amount of calories that we are burning off? Are we trading off properly? Or are we, are we intaking more calories and, and, and being sedentary and not doing anything about getting out and staying active and, and helping your body regulate itself and be efficient and function properly? <clears throat> now, these these diseases as far as spreading, um, it, it, it's not really the direct contact uh, or the indirect contact is not really there. It's more so about how you, um, how you control yourself, how you um, are able to be very disciplined. That's really what it comes down to. It comes down to your self-discipline and understanding, you know, what is my body worth? What is my, my health and wellness worth for the entirety, you know, of my lifespan? Obviously, we don't know how long we're going to live, but the idea is to be able to extend our, life, our lifespan by being able to practice healthy uh, decision-making skills and healthy uh, habits, and we should build those on a daily basis. That way we can ex expect that we can we have done everything that we can to be able to enhance our overall development. Now, some examples of non-communicable diseases, as I mentioned, um, exercise, you have, <coughs> excuse me, you have the risk uh, for heart disease, uh, obesity, um, which, are, which is a very, uh, very, very important issue that we're having to deal with in our society these days. And, Nutritional diet, uh, sanitary food preparation, um, use of tobacco, drugs, and alcohol. Uh, also, cancer is involved in that. Uh, these are the things that we do. It, we have to understand, you know, the habits that we are creating. Is this going to benefit me, or is this going to hurt me? Am I going to be able to function properly and efficiently and be able to be be the person that I am born to be, or am I going to choose to essentially hurt myself, destroy myself, or, or, uh, or allow myself to not be able to function as efficiently as I could be? Um, so this is very important. <clears throat> the non-communicable diseases and communicable diseases, as I move forward, all come down to our decision-making skills. It is imperative that we understand that anything that we do, wh whether it comes to non-communicable diseases, the prevention, the spreading, the communicable diseases, the prevention, the spreading, we have a choice. We have the ability to be able to say yes, or we have the ability to say no, and think about what we are doing and examine the situation and make a decision rather than making a rash decision through peer pressure, through the ability to, to want to be more comfortable or accepted in society, we have to become more comfortable in our own decision-making skills. 
because it is essential to our overall health and well-being that we understand that we are going to be faced with many decisions throughout our entire life. There is no doubt about it on a daily basis that we are going to be tried in areas of our nutritional habits, in areas of our exercise, in areas of our sexuality, in areas such as our uh, drugs and alcohol and, and the ability to say no to that and to those, uh, to those factors are very important because we have to be able to understand the value of ourselves and the value of our, our, our mind, body, and spirit. Understand that we cannot get very far in life if we don't take care of ourselves. And that's the whole principle of understanding that decision-making skills are essential to one's overall development and, and well-being healthy or as a health uh, perspective in life. Now, <clears throat> now that I have discussed communicable and non-communicable diseases, um, communicable diseases again focuses on direct contact, indirect contact, airborne transmission, uh, and, and focuses on uh, very serious issues that we can place into our own lives. Again, very important to understand ways to understand how it spreads, why it spreads, what we need to do to prevent it, and understand how we can uh, put ourselves in, in, in a positive aspect rather than, than making bad decisions negatively. And now, for the last part, non-communicable diseases again focuses on genetics, hereditary, uh, hereditary, and, and, and as far as what we are naturally doing and, and the overall control that we have over our health and well-being. Now that I've discussed these two topics, I hope that there will be that students will be prepared for the for the upcoming exam, and I hope that this video has helped. Uh, make things more clear in, in understanding the differences uh, of communicable diseases and non-communicable diseases and as well as our overall decision-making skills and how essential they are to our overall life. Thank you.